Good evening, everybody. God bless you. Welcome to this Thursday night. We're so glad you're joining us on our midweek Bible study. Enjoy this song. Thanks. It's a great song. Alvin Slaughter is singing this tonight. I trust you're going to be blessed by this song. And we're singing thanks. God bless you, everybody. Let me turn the song up so you can enjoy it. God bless you. God bless you, Graham, Patrick, Mike, Dean, Diane. God bless you all. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Good evening, good evening, good evening. The worst and best. Never left alone. Always right beside me. He hears me when I pray. Yes. Since I first began, you've been my dearest friend. We give you all the praise. Thank so you, we Jesus. come to be promised to say thanks. Thank you, Lord. Yes, we will. God all bless you, you everybody, for coming on tonight. We'll just wait a few more minutes for people to come on. Enjoy the song. Everything's going wrong. Praise Even God. on the mountain, your love and presence it is a beautiful makes me song. strong. See, each and every moment, and each and every day, I'm going to sing and shout to when the rocks cry out. I give you all the praise. We're going to say, we're going to say, we Everybody, I hope you enjoyed that faith lifting song tonight. What a blessing. Amen. Beautiful song, as I saw many of you putting up on the screen. Beautiful song. It is an awesome song. I've, that's an oldie, but a goodie. Uh, and I like that song because it's about giving God thanks. And thanksgiving is one of the easiest ways to release your faith and to have a strong confession of faith. Great to see everybody coming on tonight. Thank you, everybody. I see Cliff and Vonda and Graham and Crystal and, and Shauna and uh, Praise God and Norma and uh, Danny all the way from, Norma all the way from Newfoundland and Danny from Kobaconk. And thank you for joining us, everybody. If I missed you, it's not on purpose. I love you all and I bless you all. Uh, if you have your Bible, get your Bible and get yourself a good pen and get ready to take a lot of notes tonight as you are going to be blessed by the teaching tonight. Uh, try to encourage your faith and uh, so many awesome things God is doing and so many awesome things we are seeing God do. Uh, we have gotten a massive miracle in this ministry uh, and uh, you know so many of the church joining their faith for our dear brother Dave Emery. Uh, who had a heart attack and went into flatline 
and had to go through heart surgery, and the doctors were not uh, too positive about what his outcome was. He was actually uh, paralyzed, and I went to see him today, and through the power of prayer, the faith of the family upon the promises of God, the faith of the family in the power of the name of Jesus, and as we joined our faith together, Pastor Robert went and saw him, Brother Solomon went and saw him, and I went and saw him, we prayed over him, and today I saw him, he's getting ready to come out of the hospital, he's moving, he's healing. We just give God all the praise for that miracle, amen. He's a miracle-working God, hallelujah. Maybe you'll put that up on the screen. He's a miracle-working God. Nothing is impossible with our God. So that is a massive miracle. And let me tell you something, family, uh, and when he comes, we're going to give him the, get the testimony. They have, he has Muslim doctors and unbelieving doctors and unbelieving nurses who have said this is a miracle. And one nurse says this has changed her life and restored her faith in God. So we just give Jesus all the praise for that supernatural miracle. Amen. He is a miracle working God. Oh, it's great to be on the Lord's side. Amen. Tonight I want to I want to speak to you about a subject that maybe you've heard before and we're just going to re review it, but I know it's going to be bless a blessing to you. And and it's important to review the word uh in your life and constantly review the word, remind yourself of the word. That's what meditation is. Meditation is to is to ponder the word and to ponder something until you grasp its full understanding and full meaning. And uh it's important to remind ourselves of the Word of God. And, and God told the children of Israel to remind their children and to remind themselves of all of the wonderful and powerful things that He did for them in the wilderness. Amen. Tonight I want to talk about the currency of the kingdom. The currency of the kingdom. And I want to clarify a few things uh, because I see a lot of things. I don't know how much you all watch TikTok and and read things on Facebook and watch reels and stuff. But there's some stuff that's taught uh, uh, that is not 100% biblically accurate. And, and it's important to be biblically accurate if we're going to receive the fullness of God's word. Amen. Uh, we know that the kingdom of God does not operate by money, the monetary system, this fiat currency that we have that we're literally watching uh, everything changed when it comes to banking and currency, and it's going to change even more in the years to come. Money, though, is an important aspect of our lives, without a doubt. Uh, we all need money to pay our bills. We need money to buy food. We need money to pay for our homes, to put a roof over our head, to run our businesses. Ministry requires money. So money is a major aspect of our daily life and our personal natural life we need money. This is why God wants you to have more than enough. I actually forgot to bring some money down just to make it part of my illustration today, but that's okay. Uh, but money is a, is a major part of our lives, and God wants us to have more than enough. Praise God. Amen. God doesn't want us broke. He wants us to be sustained, to have provision, and even to prosper so that we can be really, truly blessed to be a blessing. And this is the covenant that God gave to Abraham. This is the, the working of God in Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and the children of Israel. And it carries over into the New Testament. This is not what I'm teaching on today, but it's an important part of what I've got to say and teach on the currency of the kingdom. Uh, money is not a bad thing. I want you to understand that money is an amoral thing. When we mean by amoral, means it has no morality within itself. Uh, uh, it's an inanimate thing that has no morality. It becomes. It, it can be used for wickedness, or it can be used for good. Amen. It's kind of like you know the big gun debate in America. Do I believe there should be? Better restrictions on people who can get access to these weapons? Yes, but the gun itself is amoral. It has no morality within it. It's whose hands it gets put into. Put it in the hands of a wicked person, they will use it for wickedness. Put it in the hands of a righteous person, they'll use it for protection, and they'll use it for, for what, it's, what it was intended to do. 
uh, and that's the same with money. Uh, so money it, uh, can be bad or it can be good. And, and so it's amoral. And, and people say, well, you know, money is evil. Money's not evil. It's the love of money that is the root of evil. The love of money is the root of evil. But money itself is not bad. Uh, and that's how we operate in this natural world. I, I, if I'm going to Longo's or if I'm going to Fortino's and I want to buy steak or chicken or I want to buy some vegetables, I, I have to give them some money in exchange for those things. Uh, so money is how we operate in this natural world, and God wants us to be blessed. And you, and you've got to get you got to get a hold of that if you haven't. Uh, Psalms thirty five verse twenty seven is very clear on that. God wants us to be blessed. Here's what He said: Let it, let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, Let the Lord be magnified, which had pleasure in the prosperity. Of his servant. God delights himself in the increase and multiplication prosperity of his children because God recognizes the necessity of wealth and provision for his people to, to succeed. Amen. So when you hear people say that God doesn't want you blessed and he doesn't want you prosper, that's just not scriptural. There's nowhere in the Bible that speaks like that. Uh, God wants us blessed. So in this natural life, we need currency to operate. Uh, and uh, and that's an important part. Deuteronomy 8.18 says that it is God who gives us the power to get wealth. So God does give us the ability to prosper. And he gives us the ability to provide for our families and to have more than enough. We have to do something. I like what Pastor Heggie said years ago. Nothing works in our life until we do. Uh, and and so uh, money is a is a is an important part of our daily life, and I can't reiterate that enough. And that's what's needed to operate within this world. Money cannot be a bad thing in the hands of a righteous person. Money can be a good thing in the hands of a righteous person, but but and it's not a bad thing. Why would God give us the power to get it? Why would God delight Himself in us increasing? Why would John say, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers, if it was all bad? Again, it's amoral. Put it into the hands of the right people. It is used for good things. And so that is the currency of this world. And again, that's changing. And we have to pay attention. I'm not teaching on the end times tonight. But we have to watch the collapsing of the, of the world currencies for the purpose of digitalized currency to usher in this new world order is happening. Uh, and God will provide for his people as long as his people are here, regardless of what happens. And you can say amen to that. But there is a currency that operates the kingdom of God. And that's what I want to teach on tonight. There's a currency by which the kingdom of God operates. And it's not fiat. It's not a fiat, uh, a fiat monetary systems of this world. Because money cannot buy spiritual things. And money cannot buy the kingdom of God and the things of the kingdom. You can sow finances into the kingdom and reap abundance in this life. Praise God and provision and God's blessing in your life because the Bible says, given it shall be given. But money itself cannot buy the things of the kingdom and money itself cannot purchase uh, these things of the Spirit. And that's something I want to just touch on in a moment and then lead you into this currency of the kingdom. For example, money can buy you groceries, buy you cars, buy you clothing, but it cannot buy you salvation. Money, there's not enough money in this world that can buy somebody salvation. And so we know this. And if you, excuse me, if you have your Bible, go to Psalms 49 real quick. Psalms 49, very, very powerful scripture. Talking about uh, wealth and putting wealth in its proper context. Putting wealth in its proper, again, God doesn't mind you being wealthy. Uh, he would rather you not being wealthy. He'd rather you not be wealthy and be on fire uh, and serving him with all of your heart than to be dead spiritually and wealthy. 
but he doesn't mind you being wealthy, but wealth in itself cannot purchase the greater things of the Spirit. Somebody say praise God for that. Amen. Psalms 49 verses 5 through 9 tells us this, Therefore, uh, wherefore should I fear in the days of evil? When, uh, sorry, yeah, that's it. Uh, when iniquity of my heels shall compass me, they that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. None of them can by any means redeem his brother nor give to God a ransom for him. So we know that monetary fiat money operates this natural world, but you cannot use it to purchase a soul, to redeem a brother, or to, or to, as God says, as a ransom for him. Uh, if we could use money to get, uh, to buy people's souls, then we would be doing it as a church constantly. But money itself does not purchase salvation, neither does money, money doesn't even have the ability to buy time. And we know this because right here in Psalms 49, verse 10, it says, For he seeth that wise men die, likewise the fool and the brutish person perish and leave their wealth to others. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. Nevertheless, man being an honor, Abideth not, he is like the beasts that perish. So we know that money can't buy time. Uh, money, uh, it doesn't matter how rich we are, so people get all bent out of shape about Bill Gates and everyone else. Listen, they're going to perish, and their money's not coming with them, and they're leaving this money behind, and their money can't buy them time, and their money cannot buy or redeem their soul as a ransom before God. So again, fiat money only works in this system. Now again, you can sow it for the purpose of the kingdom and reap blessing from it, but we're talking about the weighty things of the Spirit. Now, wisdom cannot be bought by money. Job said this in Job 28, verse 15. Wisdom cannot be bought with money. Uh uh, although you can use money to get education, but you can't just go by and instantaneously you have all of this wisdom. That's the Word of God. The power of God and the power of the Holy Spirit cannot be bought with this fiat currency. There's not enough gold in the world that can buy the power of the Holy Spirit. There's not enough silver in the world that can buy the power of the Holy Spirit. There's not enough silver and gold that can buy salvation, eternal life, and, and, and wisdom can't buy it. Uh, and if you have your Bible, we'll go to Acts chapter 8 to see this in the scripture. Don't worry, I'm leading us somewhere. And so again, thank God that he blesses us with natural resources and, and wealth to be able to sustain our lives and to be a blessing towards others, but it has its limitations when it comes to the things of the kingdom. The kingdom has its own currency. The kingdom has its own currency, and it's not natural. Praise God. It is spiritual. Now, Acts chapter 8, the Bible says in verse 20. Acts chapter 8, verse 20 says this. But Peter replied, and he's speaking to Simon. Peter replied, your money perishes with you for thinking God's gift can be bought. Of course, he was trying to buy the power of God that give the men of God the ability to deliver uh, this uh, demon-possessed child. Uh, and so he, they, he was wanting that power. He was, he was a sorcerer who thought he could purchase it and use it for his own profitability. And the apostles said to him, no, you can't you're going to, you're, you and your money are going to perish because you thought you could buy the gift or this power of the Holy Spirit with your money. So natural money, as we know, and it's common sense, doesn't work to purchase spiritual things. The currency of the kingdom is not natural. The currency of the kingdom, dear family, is faith. Maybe you'll put that up on the screen for me tonight. The currency of the kingdom is faith. Praise God. 
And uh, I want you to get that up on the screen because that, and I want to drive that home tonight into your mind and into your heart and into your spirit. The currency of the kingdom is faith. And I and I and I know there's people in the church that downplay the significance of faith, or they don't put an emphasis on it, and they should. There should be an emphasis on uh, the measure of faith that God has given us, and the gift of faith, and the operation of faith in the life of the believer. Praise God. If you're a believer, you have to operate by faith. So the currency of the kingdom is faith. So again, just like taking some uh, some money to go buy, say, some jewelry, or taking money to go buy something for your house, or taking money to buy furniture. In order to obtain the things of the kingdom of God, it requires faith. That is the currency monetary system of the kingdom. And years ago, God spoke that to me. He said, if you want to uh, obtain uh, if you want to obtain something in the natural, it takes finances to do it. If you want to obtain something within the realm of the spirit, you're going to require faith. And so I want to encourage us as I've been praying for the church. I've got a great message again for this Sunday. Uh, right now, please pray for Dr. Uh, Charles McVitie. He's been sick and he may not be coming to us this Sunday. We're believing God that he'll be there. But if he doesn't come, I have a great message for us on Sunday that you don't want to miss. You need, to, And I encourage you to be in the live service this Sunday as God was moving with great glory last Sunday. Praise God. But we must start putting, I want you to understand, you must start putting an emphasis on the operation of faith in your life. And you must begin to invest into your life uh, the, uh, to um, expand and increase the measure of faith that God has given to you. Praise God. That comes by meditation and study within the Word of God. It comes by exercising your faith upon the promises of God and trusting God for those things uh, to be released unto you. Because that is the currency of the kingdom. Praise God. Simon fell, found out very quickly, you can have all the money in the world, but you're not purchasing the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You can have all the money in the world, but you're not purchasing the manifold wisdom of God. You can have all the money of the world, but you're not purchasing your salvation and you are not going to purchase any more time in your life with all the money in the world. But what you can do is you can obtain these things with the currency of the kingdom, which is the working of faith in your life. You can obtain salvation by the currency of the kingdom, which is faith. You can obtain the manifold wisdom of God by exercising your faith. You can obtain more time in your life by exercising your faith. Praise God. It was faith. Uh, our dear brother Dave, who had the heart attack and, and just about passed away, it was the working of faith upon the promises of God that has sustained this man and has extended his life. It's the working of faith. Could you imagine if there weren't a people of faith around him, and if his life wasn't based upon the promises of God, what could happen? So you can redeem time, the Bible says, and that comes by the currency of the kingdom, which is faith. You can obtain the anointing of the Holy Spirit to cast out devils and to work miracles and supernatural things with the currency of the kingdom, which is faith. So again, just like the natural world operates with a monetary system, the kingdom of God operates with a, with, with the monetary system of faith. The things of God, I want you to put this in the spirit, the things of God don't come by chance. And the things of God, God don't come into your life because you have, you're God's favorite. Uh, the things of God don't come into your life because God is a, a respecter of persons towards you. Uh, the things of God as a believer, as a believer, all of us as believers, 
The things of God come because you have exercised your faith upon the promises of God, and you've used the currency of the kingdom to obtain those things. You say, well, how do you know that, Pastor? Well, let's get into some scriptures uh, first, and, and, so, uh, and then we'll come back to some of those thoughts. Now, listen to me, family. God knows that you needed currency for the kingdom. You need it. You needed it to operate, that faith. You needed it. So what did he do? Romans chapter 12, verse 3, he puts a deposit in your bank account. He puts a deposit in your spirit called the, the measure of faith. Praise God. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. He puts within your spirit the measure of faith. So God gets you started by giving you a measure, the measure of faith. Hallelujah. Now, it's up to you to take that faith and expand it and to grow it, to mature it, to, to increase it in your life. Uh, so that you can obtain uh, more from the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. It's the same thing in the natural world. We work hard. We invest. Uh, we, we, we do certain things to help increase our natural wealth so that we can obtain more things in this natural life and bring a greater stableness to our lives and a greater comfort to our lives. We do that. Amen. You know, and so when you're wise with your wealth and you do certain things, uh, you can create a, a better condition of life for yourself. It's the same thing with the kingdom. God gives you a deposit in your spirit called the measure of faith. It's inside of you. Now you've got to increase that, multiply that, and mature in that so that you can have a better condition of life in the kingdom of God. Praise God. And this is why some folks progress in the kingdom, and this is why some folks increase in the kingdom, and some don't. It all comes down to what are they doing with the measure of faith, according to Romans 12, 3, and are they utilizing that currency, and I'm using currency as an analogy, currency of the kingdom to obtain the promises of God and expand their life in his kingdom. Amen. You know, you say, well, Pastor, I don't know if I still believe this. Well, everything in the kingdom comes as a result of faith. Now, let's go back to Hebrews chapter 11. I, I read this verse a lot. And I have been reading this verse for many, many years since I've been saved. Studied this verse. If you ever look at my Bible, it there is so much writing in Hebrews chapter 11, little notes and, and study notes that I have done over the years for this little world word faith, which is pistis. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. There it is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now, you need faith even for finances in this earth. You can believe God for natural things and things of the Spirit. Uh, I'm saying that money can't buy the things of the Spirit, but faith is can cause you not only to obtain the things of the Spirit, but can also cause you to obtain natural things because those natural things are, are, are connected to the Word of God and to His promises. His promises, there's many, many promises concerning natural things in your life. Amen. Like, my God shall supply all of your needs according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. All of your needs shall be met by God, and faith can help that come into existence. So that's the powerful thing about faith. It can cross into the realm of the spirit and into the realm of the natural and obtain from both of those realms where money is limited. Fiat money is limited. It can only purchase the things that are natural. Amen. Although you can sow it to reap, uh, but it's for the natural realm. Praise God. Thank God for the operation of faith. Now, now faith is substance, things hope for the evidence of things not seen. So it is the it is the substance, it is the foundation, it is everything to obtain anything concerning the promises of God. Hallelujah. Now Hebrews eleven six, we know that scripture, it says, Without faith it's impossible to please God. So that's the currency of the kingdom. Amen. I can't go right now to the bank 
and make a deposit of chickens. I can't do that. I can't go right now and uh, and take vegetables in exchange to Leon's for a couch. They want finances. They want money, right? And when I bring cash or I use whatever my debit from my bank and I give them cash, they will give me a couch. Listen to me, family. This is very important. If I take that cash and I go to the grocery store, they're going to give me, praise God, they're going to give me some produce or some poultry or whatever I need when I bring that cash. I cannot bring a pair of shoes to the grocery store and say, look at, I got these brand new, look nice looking shoes and I'd like some sliced ham. No, they want cash. It's the same thing in the kingdom. You can't bring your our own ways and our own ideas and our own things to try to please God. We bring what he has established within his kingdom to receive the promises, uh, his promises and his word. And we please him by faith. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. We please him by faith. So that's why he said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So in the context of the, we're saying the currency of the kingdom is what obtains the promises of God in our lives. Those promises are both spiritual and natural. And in order for that to come into existence in our lives, praise God, we have to exercise that faith because that's what, that's what pleases God. That is the substance of all things, uh, the things that we hope for and the things that are before us through the scriptures. Hallelujah. Amen. And the great thing about God is he gave you a deposit into your bank account to get started. Hallelujah. You know, and that I did the same thing with my children. What I did with my children, I opened them all their own bank account. And I took some money and I put it in their bank account to open their account. And then I told them, if you want to now increase that account, you're going to have to work for it. You're going to have to be wise with your money and do something with it. And it's your responsibility. I opened the account. I made the deposit. What you do with it now will determine how big it grows. It's the same thing with God, the Father. He takes that measure of faith. He puts it into your spirit. And he says to you, now you do something with it to make that thing grow. And as you make that thing grow, you will be able to accomplish a much much more within my house, within my kingdom, and you will literally watch those promises coming to pass in your life as you grow that measure of faith. Somebody say, praise God. Hallelujah. And these things that I've told you about are obtainable by faith. James 1.6 says it very clear. Now, some of you know this scripture, and some of you may not know this scripture, but I want to read it to you, okay? Praise God. So when people say it's not all about faith, they it is all about faith. Without faith, it's impossible. Please God, nothing comes into your life without it. So James chapter 1, verse 6 says this, but when you ask him, talking about asking God, verse 5 says, if you want to know, I'm reading from the New Living Translations on this one, if you want to know what God wants you to do, ask him, and he will gladly tell you. For now, the King James says wisdom, for he is always ready to give a bountiful supply of wisdom to all who ask him. He will not resent it. Praise God. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, I like how they wrote, wrote this, that God will give a bountiful portion of wisdom. Remember what I said that money cannot buy the manifold wisdom of God, but if you go to God, faith can can bring it to you. Hallelujah. The currency of the kingdom. And it says this, a bountiful supply of wisdom to all who ask him, he will not resent it. But when you ask him, be sure that you really expect to him to tell you. That's faith. Expectancy. Faith is peace, obedience. It is trust. It is confidence. It is belief. Amen. So when you ask him, Expect him to tell you, for a double-minded man, mind will be unsettled as a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. Now, here's what the King James says. 
But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that waver is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and toss. So when we're asking for wisdom, we are asking it with expectancy that we're going to get it. That's what faith is. Hallelujah. Amen. This is why it's important to grow that faith, that account of faith, so that in the kingdom you can operate more successfully, just like this natural world with that fiat currency. Praise God. And if we ask for wisdom by faith, and we ask God for everything by faith, because he said without faith it's impossible to please him. So wisdom, which is a principal thing in our lives, and it's more valuable than money. Wisdom is more valuable than silver, than gold, than precious stones and rubies. It's more valuable than success. Wisdom will make you successful. Wisdom will bring all of that into your life. It's a powerful thing. And God said, ask, but ask with expectancy. Ask with faith. Hallelujah. Because that's how the kingdom operates. Begging God, listen to me, family, begging God does not release the promise of God. Begging God doesn't do that. Uh, you know, complaining doesn't release the promises of God. You can beg God all you want and say, well, I should get it because I've been begging and I've been asking God over and over and over again and, and, and pleading with God over and over again. If faith is not connected, then you cannot, for an analogy, purchase the things of the kingdom without faith. You cannot obtain them without faith. So you can beg with God, you can complain, that's not going to bring it. Whining is not going to bring it, because that's unbelief. God is expecting us to believe him for what he has promised. Hallelujah. I felt God tell me to teach this tonight, so that's why I'm teaching it by the Holy Spirit. Amen. So... It's important for you to, and I'm going to be preaching, Lord willing, here, if not this week, the weeks to come, uh, this message that the Holy Spirit dropped in my spirit while I was meditating this week. I want to encourage you to take time to invest into yourself by multiplying and working and concentrating on growing your faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Very, very important. When you grow, and I'm going to tie this back to the natural too. When you grow your faith and when you increase that measure of faith in your life, you will watch a few things dissipate, dissolve, and disappear from your life. And they are worry. When you increase your faith, worry will dissipate and disappear. Fear will dissipate and disappear. Praise God. And anxiety and uncertainty and the feeling of hopelessness will disappear from your life when you work on increasing your faith. Praise God. God bless you, Danny. I'm, I'm releasing my faith for you, buddy. God's going to continue to bless you. I like all your comments. Amen, Patricia. And I believe it, Terry. Now, let me tie this back to the natural. When you increase with fiat currency or with wealth, gold, silver, assets, and finances, when you have worked and have invested and been wise with, 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 with those finances and multiplied them, Worry concerning purchasing things and sustaining your life begins to go down. Uh, when you're blessed, when you have more than enough, that worry goes, doesn't it? You don't, when you have, when, when a person has, uh, well, let me put it this way. I don't think Bill Gates or Warren Buffett, these very wealthy men, worry about what they're going to eat tonight, do they? They don't worry about that. They, they don't worry about where they're going to sleep tonight because they have enough wealth to purchase a roof over their head and a bed to sleep in. 
They don't worry about the education of their children. They, they don't worry about having to purchase clothes or for health care or anything. Why? Because they have increased their natural wealth. So they're not worried about natural things. They're not worried about whether they can go on vacation or they can take some time off because they have enough wealth to sustain all of that. They have built that up and that has demolished the worry of sustainability. I want to encourage you, as you increase your faith, worry will dissipate, fear will be destroyed, anxiety will go away, because as you increase your faith and the account of faith and the measure of faith in your life, then you will not be worried because you know, you just know that everything is going to be fine. And when you need something or you have to do something, or you need a you need a breakthrough through something that's not going to be an issue because your faith and your confidence and your trust and your expectancy is on the God who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think your faith is in the God who created the heavens and the earth and you have no concern because you know that God is going to make a way for you every single time. This is why Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And in the context of the scripture, he's saying, Why do you worry about what you're going to eat or what you're going to wear or what you're going to, where you're going to sleep? O oh, ye of little faith. Come on, somebody. Praise God. He, you know, so... We must increase that measure of faith, just like people increase their bank accounts. We must increase our bank account of the kingdom, which is the currency of the kingdom, to abolish those things so that we can operate more effectively. And again, let me rephrase it again, that we might have a better condition of life in the kingdom of God. A Christian should never... Uh, never go through long bouts. There's times we become discouraged. There's times where we become frustrated. We're human beings. Uh, and as much as we are saved and born again, we still battle with the flesh. So there's going to be those times. But a Christian should not have extended times of depression and sadness. A, a Christian should be filled with joy, should be filled with happiness, should be filled with a great outlook on life should have great expectancy, wonderful relationships, amen, a great connection with God, experiencing wonderful things. Doesn't mean we're not going to have problems. Doesn't mean we're not going to have trials. Doesn't mean that we're not going to face attacks. But there's something inside of it that says, I'm going to get through all of this and, and, uh, and keep the joy of the Lord. But that comes, family, as you increase the, the the currency of the kingdom in your life, which is faith. I hope you're being blessed tonight by the word of God because this is the Holy Spirit asking me to teach this. And especially in these last days, you know, people are saying to me, are you worried money is going to run out? Are you worried they're going to take your money? No, I'm not. Why? Because I have a greater currency that's greater than, than the Canadian dollar. It's greater than than the American dollar. It's greater than gold. It's greater than silver. It's greater than diamonds. It's greater than rubies. It's greater than topaz. It's greater than, than all of the wealth of the world. Come on, somebody. We have a currency that's far more substantial. And guess what? It's not collapsing. It's not running out. It's not being digitized. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not falling away. It's not, it, man cannot control you or manipulate you with it. It's called the currency of the kingdom, which is faith. And if you have faith in God, you can get everything you need for this life. Hallelujah. Somebody say praise God to that. Because Peter said it to the church, according as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and to godliness. And faith can bring that into existence. That doesn't mean we're not wise. Please don't misinterpret what I'm saying. You should, you should work. You should save. You should invest. You should store some extra food and be wise like Joseph and all of that. You should. But your faith 
is upon the promise of God, and the currency of the kingdom is far more substantial than all of the different currencies within this world. Because the currencies of this world are limited to this world, the currency of the kingdom, once again, if you're coming on later, the currency of the kingdom can bring the things of the spirit and bring the things that are natural to my life. Hallelujah. I can use the currency of the kingdom to sow into the kingdom, but it's the faith that I'm believing upon the word of God that will bring the increase from that seed. And, and I, can, I can use faith to obtain salvation. I use faith to obtain the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I use faith to work the gifts of the Spirit. I use faith to get the, the, the fruits of the Spirit. So do you on all those things. You use faith to get the manifold wisdom of God. You use faith for the prophetic utterance of God. You use faith, hallelujah, to work out your ministry for the joy of the Lord, for happiness, for peace, hallelujah, for protection, for the angel of the Lord to watch over you. Faith can bring all of that. But faith can also bring friendships. And faith can also bring family. And faith can also bring a house. And faith can also bring a car. Faith is more powerful than than the fiat currencies of this world. So I should spend time investing in it. Somebody say, praise God. I'm getting blessed by this teaching tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. And please share. This is important because these last days are going to become difficult. The days of ahead are going to be challenging. Uh, but, but I want you to make this confession of faith and expectancy. Yeah, the days ahead are going to be challenging for the world. But I'm going to be okay. Why? Because my hope and your hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. We will not trust the sweetest frame, but we will wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, that solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. I have faith in a God where nothing is impossible with him. Hallelujah. Now, how? One, what's one of the great ways we can increase our faith hallelujah and i if, and if you have your bible one of the great ways you can increase your faith is found in the scripture now again it's it's through the reading of the word uh you know spend more time listening to the word than than all the news media out there or scrolling through facebook or scrolling through tiktok get the word in your family but here's a great way to help you increase the word that Maybe you haven't heard before, or faith, uh, increase the, and increase the word too, but increase faith in your life. Hallelujah. All right, so if you have your Bible, go to Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6, and we're going to get ready to close on this tonight. I hope you're being blessed by the message tonight. Because I want you to put this, I want you to put this on the screen. I want to get this into your spirit. Nothing is impossible to him or her that believes. Put that in your spirit tonight. Get that in your spirit. Nothing is impossible to them that believe. Praise God. Amen. Now, Hebrews chapter 6. Here's what the Word of God says. In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. Uh, oh, let me go back to verse 11. The Bible says in verse, Hebrews 6, 11, And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. Make sure you're diligent concerning your assurance of the hope that God has given to you. Hallelujah. Amen. I love it. If people put up there, nothing's impossible to him or her that believe. Amen, Crystal. Um Make sure that you put diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. Now, let me read that from the New Living. Let's read that from the New Living Translation. And we are anxious that you keep right on loving others as long as life lasts so that you will get your full reward. Now, I don't like the way that's written, but I do like the way it's written in the King James. And we desire that every one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. I mean, put put some diligence be diligent with it. Diligent means you're focused, you're paying attention to it, you're investing into it, uh, into that hope, into the full assurance of hope. You are convinced. Hallelujah. You are convinced 
of what God has planned for your life. You are convinced on the promises of God. That's the full assurance of hope. And I like this, that you be not slothful. That, this is great tonight, that you be not slothful. So just listen, uh, you know, lazy hands will make a person poor, just in the natural, won't it? Uh, that's why Proverbs uh, 6 says, go the way you ant, you slugger. Uh, a little sleep, a little slumber, and all of a sudden poverty is going to come upon you. Uh, you know, if laziness in the natural and not working and being diligent in the natural uh, can cause people to be in a impoverished place in their life. That's not the only reason why poverty comes, but it can come that way. And uh, slothfulness. It's the same thing in the spirit family. Slothfulness. Not paying attention. Not... Uh, not being diligent concerning and being convinced concerning the promises of God and the hope that He's given us, and 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 not and not being diligent concerning increasing that bank account of faith and that currency of faith, that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Oh, bless God! Let me say that again. That you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. So after he had patiently endured, he obtained that promise. What he God is trying to say is don't be don't don't pay attention uh, don't be ignorant and don't turn away from the full assurance of hope. Pay attention to it. Invest into it. Be diligent with it. And work and be diligent concerning your faith. And one of the ways to multiply your faith is to pay attention and be followers, praise God, of them who exercise their faith so that you can learn from them, so that you yourself can obtain the promises of God and be a blessing. In blessing, I will bless thee. In multiplying, I will multiply. God says, hey, uh, imitate those people of faith. Uh, can I say something? Get away from those people on TikTok and who, who complain and Christians who complain uh, and Christians who downplay uh, the blessing of God or even prosperity or downplay a faith because they themselves are not getting anything because they're not exercising their faith or they're not being diligent with their faith. So because they're not, they they say it doesn't work or they complain about those who do. Don't complain about those who are exercising their faith. Don't 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 talk bad about them. Don't attack them. Imitate them. Learn from them. Ask people, how did you obtain that? How did you grow in that? How did you get that? How did you see that miracle? How did you how did you sow finance so that you could reap a harvest? How how did was it when you prayed God did that for you? Watch them, imitate them, imitate their walk, imitate their study, imitate their confession and the things that they say, imitate their preaching. You know, I I grew in faith because I imitated Brother Shambach's preaching and Brother Shutt- Ted Shuttlesworth's preaching when I was a young man and other men of God who would preach and I would imitate their preaching. I would I would learn from them as they exercise their faith. And I would want to practice what they did. And I want to encourage you to do the same. That's going to increase the currency of the kingdom in your life. That's going to increase the bank account of faith. That's going to cause you to live in a better condition of life in the kingdom. That's going to see you prosper and multiply Destroy worry, destroy fear, destroy anxiety, destroy concern, and cause you to live in God's place of peace. Hallelujah. Then you start knowing who you are. You know who's around you. You know who's with you. You know who your source is. When that currency of the kingdom, which is faith, grows. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say amen. As my dear friend, uh, Ace Pastor Ace Clark used to say, in Poland they say, Amenski. I don't know if that's true, and if you're Polish, please don't be offended by that. But, uh, so again, 
Don't be slothful. Don't be slothful, but be followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise of God. You know what I used to do? I used to watch Brother Shambach and Brother Shelton and others, how they would pray. And I would pray just like them until it became a part of me. I'd listen to how they spoke. I'd listen to them around a dinner table when they talked about the promises of God and they gave their testimonies and stories about what God did. And then I would begin to live that out myself. And that helps increase your faith. It helps to bring you a greater level of spiritual maturity. And it teaches you how to obtain the promises of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, that's all I got tonight. I hope you enjoyed the teaching tonight through the word of God. And I'm going to pray for you tonight. Remember that it might put him amen ski like that one, eh, Mike? Uh, and that's the church we want to be. This is the church we want to be. The, this is the people of God that we want to be. Amen. We want to tell the truth. We want to preach it as it is. We want to deal with the issues of this nation. We want to go after the, the wickedness and the evil through the preaching of God's word and the declaration of truth. But we also want to be people of faith and proving what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God and obtaining those promises. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, God bless you, everybody. Please share this. Please get this out. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your encouraging words. You're always so encouraging to me. And uh, when I hear your encouragement, it fires me up to be even more for Christ and more for you. Uh, so I love you all, and I thank God for all of you. Um, uh, but I am praying that your bank account is going to increase. Uh, your natural bank account, I do pray, pray that that increases, but I'm praying that your heavenly bank account increases and the currency of the kingdom multiplies in your life in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for tonight. What a wonderful time around the table of your word to receive the word of God. We know our faith has been increased tonight because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We know we've been blessed tonight as we've come together in unity and oneness to receive from the Holy Spirit through the Word of God. And I pray, Lord, that this Word dwells richly within our hearts. And, Lord, that it becomes, it is a seed that is sown into us that brings 30, 60, 90, and 100-fold return and causes us to mature and grow in our walk and in the calling of God upon our lives. In Jesus' my name. Father, I pray that everyone listening and everyone watching and all the people of God, that the measure of faith that you've given them, according to Romans chapter 12, verse 3, will increase. It'll multiply. It'll expand. It will get dividends. Hallelujah. It will grow in interest in the name of Jesus. And the people of God's currency of the kingdom will become so large, that faith will become so large, it will abolish, destroy, crush worry and fear and anxiety and concern and that that faith will bring so much pleasure to you lord as they as your people witness your promises coming into existence and a reality within their lives on a daily basis bless the people of god father and i declare by faith and speak by faith and a prophetic word that the faith of your people is at an extraordinary level beyond comprehension and beyond human understanding. I pray that your people have great faith in Jesus' mighty name. Bless everyone tonight, Father. Thank you. You give your angels charge over the people of God. The angel of the Lord goes before your people. Hallelujah. The angel, the angel of the Lord encamps around your people like the mountains encamp around Jerusalem. And I give you praise for their protection in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Your people are blessed and highly favored. Thank you, Lord, that your people are, uh, uh, are, are increasing uh, and they are experiencing multiplication in every aspect of life, in wisdom, in the power of your spirit, in the fruit of the spirit, in the gifts of the spirit, and all of the goodness of God. And I, Lord, I wish above all things that your people would prosper and be in good health even as their soul prospers. Thank you. They're filled with joy and peace, and they're experiencing that abundant life that Jesus promised. We give you praise, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. Your face is red. The anointing is all over you.
Yeah, that's what that's what my kids say, Aim. They said when the anointing comes on dad, his ears get red. So I guess are my ears red? I guess the anointing is working. Hallelujah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mike. God bless you, Graham. God bless you, everybody. I love you so much. I'm looking forward, ladies. Don't forget your special day in Burlington is this Saturday. We have about 100, almost 150 ladies coming out uh, to cele- be celebrated and have a time of celebration. You can, I believe you can still get in by contacting Peggy Sue. Hallelujah. We'll get you in somehow. Amen. And, uh, and we'll see you Sunday morning if the Lord should tarry. God bless your family. Have an awesome rest of your week. We love you so much. Amen.